from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. Righto. What was it? Two weeks ago? Three weeks ago, maybe? My rack-mounted APC-1000 UPS spat the dummy. Ended up tripping a number of circuit breakers here at home. Something inside that APC has finally let go. So, in order to power the cabinet, I had to migrate all the servers down to the RTSRTU power brick at the bottom of, bottom of my sun cabinet. There's only one problem, and that's the fact that I can only power one side of the module, and that's mainly because my NEMA L26 240V 30 amp power plug, which is, as we know is a twist lock, seems to be missing something substantial for me to be able to power the other side of the RTSRTU power module. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, we have a bit of a stuff up, <laughs> alright, now, we all know these, NEMA L26s, alright, if you've been around server cabinets and server racks, you know these plugs, alright, 20 amp, or 30 amp, 240 vac, alright, now, these are a little different here in Australia compared to other places in the world, now, for my international viewers who aren't aware, here in Australia, for domestic power, it is single phase 240 volt, active, neutral, and ground. That's it. All right. However, with these L26s, whilst I know what ground is, and you can probably pick what ground is, active and neutral is a little bit of a problem. Now, when you look these up online, they give you in some cases, the American wiring. Now, my US viewers will be well aware of this. To get 240 volt through a plug, you add two phases of 120. Here in Australia, we get 240 volt down the active line. All right? Now, the problem here is, trying to figure out which one of these plugs is active and which one's neutral is a little bit of a nightmare. Luckily though, I worked it out. X is active, Y is neutral, and this big pin here, with my finger, is ground. All right, and this is why they're called twist locks. Now, as I drop its cover. So what I've got to do is rewire this. Um, it all fell to pieces. And I have no idea why, let alone how. So we've got to rewire it. Now, this is different to the existing plug that I've got. Right? Now, remember, I've got two of these. One for each of the RTS RTU modules. All right? So what we've got to do is rewire it correctly, because the last thing you want to do, and you know, I've been playing around with electronics and electricity and wiring things for years, especially when it comes to PCs and servers. You don't want to be 180 degrees out of phase, okay? So, meaning you don't want active on neutral and neutral on active, because that means you're 180 degrees out of phase. Okay, now, some people may say, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter if you're running full wave rectification. Yeah, I don't, I don't abide by that. You, you, in some cases, it doesn't actually matter, all right, if you're out of phase 180 degrees. But when it comes to IT equipment and, and other sensitive um electrical components or electronic components, you've got to be in phase. So your active has to be your active, your neutral has to be your neutral. You don't want it 180 degrees out of whack. Not only that, it can cause other problems elsewhere in your circuits, okay? Because as one thing goes high, this goes low, okay? That can get things out of phase very, very quickly, all right? Switch mode power supplies, classic example. They don't like being out of phase, all right? So with these plugs, 
when you look them up online, as I did, you often find that X and Y are two 120 volts connected to each, giving my American viewers, as you guys would know, 240 VAC. Here in Australia, though, we get 240 VAC in one line, active. Okay? But because of your 240 volt sine wave, all right, so as we know, you start at zero, your top is 90 degrees in the phase, as it comes down again, it's at 180 degrees in phase, drops down to 270 and goes back up. That's your 50 cycles per second, 50 hertz. Now, my American viewers, as you guys know, 60 hertz. So what you don't want, and I'm using IT equipment here, is you don't want to be out of phase with the actual line supply, all right? Because that can, as I said, that can create all sorts of chaos. Radios, like the old, you know, double cassette decks and that, didn't really care. They weren't as sensitive. But when you're talking about IT equipment and other sensitive electronic components, the AC supply, you, you're better at erring on the side of caution and being in phase, all right? So let's, uh, let's head out to the back of the 80 series to the mobile workbench. And let's get this wired up so that I can run the other side of the RTS-RTU module, spreading the load a little bit more evenly across the power circuits. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so, pulled apart the female side of this, and we have X is active, Y is neutral, and green as ground. Now, here in Australia, active, neutral, and earth, all right? Now, way, way, way back, it would have been red, black, and earth. But these days, it's brown, blue, and earth. So, that makes life easy, right? So, we have, uh, what do we got there? X, Y, and ground. So, we have active, neutral, earth so now what we'll do is go to the back of the cabinet where the other power lead is and put it together all right so here's the other cable got the top of it on so with this one it is active neutral and ground so i'll plug that all into there and put it all back together all right so now a little bit of a uh, old mate's tip. When you want to put these back together, all right, and you've had it fall out like I did, when you're tightening them up, you don't want to over tighten them and crush it, but you want to make sure that you can't pull on pull them out, okay? Um, because we all, we all know what will happen if you pull these out and they'll short. The other thing you want to make sure is you get these deep into each of the terminal holes all right, so there's no chance of it, you know, rubbing out or anything like that. All right. Now, these were originally four wire. You can see here they've been converted to three wire. All right. So we have active, neutral, and earth. So I'll now put the cover back on it, and it'll be almost done. And there we are. All right. Now. With these, remember about your little tab, okay? That's your line-up tab. When tightening these down, you don't want to over-tighten them, like, you know, get out a freaking Torx wrench and, you know, put 25 foot-pounds of force on, on the screws, but you want them very tight so that there's no chance of them failing, all right? This is paramount for one reason. Okay, with our female receptacle the reason you want this tight and I'll hang on let me put this together and I'll show you hold on so once these are together right when you go to untwist them if you haven't got either end of these tight and you go to pull it out good thing I've got no power on this like so all right if you haven't got either this end tight or this end tight, and you go to pull the damn thing apart, you're going to yank on either, you know, that cable or this cable, and you're going to be up for a rewire again. So there we go. So my twist lock plugs 
are put back together. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this was because when the Acer and the 730 get into this cabinet, let me turn the light on, shine a bit of light on the situation. When the Acer and the 730 come into this cabinet, okay, I'm gonna need the other side of the power brick to power them. Because remember, these have only got five a side, right? Five, you know, so 10 on the back, 10 on the front, right? So five on each of these two whopping great um, connectors. So you've got five on that side, five on that side, as we're all familiar with. So the idea would be is that I spread the load, not just across the power module, but across my circuits as well. So I'm not pulling, you know, both sides are not pulling their maximum, all right? So there we go. It's got that fixed, which will allow me to get the Acer done. Makes life easy. I've just got to screw the strain relief in. The other plug does not have strain relief. I don't know what happened to it. That's how it's always been, unfortunately. Um, but it's in tight, and I've made sure these are tight too. And the, the thing with these also, um, now I got this one and the other one with my RS cabinets, which is really good because I, if, when I bought the Sun cabinet, I would have had to buy these anyway, so luckily I had them. Um, the thing with these is, is the fact that you, um, they're less prone to falling out, you know, unlike, say, a wall plug, which is why they are so used when it comes to cabinets and stuff. Less prone to falling out and greater current ability too. These are 30 amp, right? These are NEMA L26s, all right? So they're 30 amp. So there we go. Done. All right, guys. Uh... Hopefully I'll get to the cabinet wiring today. If not, we'll uh, we'll start it in the new year. Other than that, okay. This has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.